Hello everyone, this is Pedro from Partalista with one more video. It's been a while that I recorded the last video, but this is a, this is a video that I've been wanting to uh, record. Uh, this is about data breaks, so just to simplify what's happening here in this demo, I just drew a diagram to show the components of this demo. So I have a, my local computer here, a Python code that just like uploads CSV of fake data. I'm just generating this fake customer data that I'm gonna use then Databricks Auto Loader to read that in a stream and load into a Delta table called Bronze. And then I'm gonna activate change data feed then to propagate those changes into another layer, which I'm gonna to just show some simple uh, transformation just to, for the sake of the example. But I will show you the boilerplate code that you will need to create like a pipeline. Also, I have uh, this blob storage that I'm loading the file. It's actually like Azure Blob Storage that's mounted to the Databricks uh, file system. So if you see here on my Databricks, um, which one, that one? So if I go to my Databricks file system and then I explore my mount folder, come on. Yeah, it's Databricks here. And then inside here, I have um, several folders. So, so if I see here in my storage account, all those folders are mapped into my, they're just, they're just good like side by side here. Can you see customers? So at the moment it's like empty. So the customer. So this uh, Python script here, I'm gonna create like fake data. I'm just gonna run that again. That's gonna create like 20 records. So let's just start right now. Uh, it's called load simple. And then that's just, yeah. So that, if I refresh here, so it created like fake data of like 20 customers with name, email, and uh, like username, or oh, city, sorry. So. ID, first name, last name, email and city. So, so if I go to my notebook, I'm gonna demonstrate two things, as I said in my diagram here. So I'm putting the link on the description of where I have this notebook saved, so you can download in my GitHub. Uh, basically, I have the documentation here for autoloader and change data feed. So autoloader is here. So autoloader is a way to automatically load ones uh, from, from a object storage. And the file can be a CSV, it can be a parquet. There is a lot of format that reads, reads JSON. And then a beauty of autoloader is that it makes sure that just load this file once into a bronze table. So that's the first step. And then I'm just gonna go through 13 steps in this demo. I'm gonna generate this CSV, which I've already done. And then I'm just gonna read the stream of those CSV files and then load into a bronze table. And then I'm just gonna enable data feed in this bronze table. First, we're gonna quickly inspect the history of this table. I, we're gonna display the contents of this table that's been just to prove that uh, that data that's been loaded, and then I'm just also gonna to display the content of the change data feed of this table to see how the change data feed works, and then I'm gonna make some changes in this table and see how those those changes are reflected in the change data feed. And then the last step is just like a series of steps that we are going to read the chain data feed and create a pipeline where we have some transformation. We're gonna, as part of this process, create a silver table schema. And then what we're gonna do is like, we're gonna read the stream of this chain data feed and then use 
a functionality called for each batch which reads the stream and then there are incoming batches where we're going to pass a function as an argument in this for each function it's a little bit um, difficult to understand as i'm talking but when once you see the code once you see the demo i think everything is gonna become clear and then i'm just gonna once i've demonstrate the whole pipeline i'm gonna create more records and then see the pipeline flowing from the auto loader to the cdf or change data fit stream codes and then to finish we're gonna inspect the logs just to see what happened in the background uh, and then after the, the end i'm just gonna clear the checkpoints to explain a little bit how databricks tracks uh both the um, auto loader in checkpoints. And then because once you rerun the stream, it knows exactly where it stopped and then only reads from where it stops. And that's the beauty of uh, both auto loader and CDF using checkpoints. And then at the end, I'm just gonna clear out uh, everything so you can um, I can do another demo and run all over again. So let's get started. I have I have just code here uh, about the logs. I'm just gonna run here. Uh, I've done a video about logs, which you I'll put also in the description, and then you can check it out. So I'm gonna run like just the libraries that I'm gonna import, uh, and then okay. So this first code here, I'm, I'm, I'm having like a checkpoint path where I'm going to save the checkpoint of my um, stream. So if I go into this code, what I'm doing, like I'm reading the stream and then that's the, if you, you see on the documentation on this link that I'm gonna put it, um, what this code is doing is that I'm just saying I'm reading cloud files, which are files in object storage. And then the format is CSV. And then I also need to pass this option here, which is a schema location, which is going to be inferred uh, and then save in this checkpoint. And then I'm going to load. You ha I have to pass the path on my DBFS, which is this mount here where my CSV files are. If I go and refresh that, so you see that now we have files here. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna read this folder and then load uh, this file only once. If I run this stream twice, it's not going to load it again because the auto loader saves on the checkpoint what's already been loaded and just guarantees that only loads once. And that's it. So, and then I'm just gonna trigger in uh, available now to true, which means that I'm not, I'm just running this in a batch and then I'm just directing this um, stream to a table that at the moment doesn't exist. When I run this, Databricks takes care of it, creates this table and saves the data in this table. So let's run that. Just gonna create that spark job see that the table doesn't exist yet now it's gonna start the stream yeah and so now probably is creating the table loading the data yeah so let's make sure that it's all happening. All right, looks like it's created. We have 20 records. So we're gonna later here in the code inspect those records. So the next step that I'm doing here, I'm gonna enable the change data feed because in order to track the change and then have this change data feed, I have to enable that. And so that's the code. And then if you go here on the change data feed documentation, it goes into the detail what's how it's done. I'm just gonna now run that. And then once that's done, I'm gonna just inspect the history to see how those chains happened 
in this table. So this table has got three versions. So first we create a table and then obviously we read that first string and then we create that property which will track um, the change from version two. So how now can I read that change data feed? So first let's play the 20 records that's coming from the uh, this one. You can see that Sarah Santiago is the first record. It should match here, Sarah Santiago. So that's the data there. So the change data feed, how you read it, I'm just having the Python code here. There are two ways to read it. You can um, read that in from the version or from a timestamp. In this case, I'm reading here from version two. So that's version two. You have to put from the version that this table property was set because if I put a version that's before, that's gonna give me an error. Or I can use the timestamp when that table was created or the chain data feed that was uh, enabled. And then both are gonna be the same result. And I'm gonna run this code and display this data frame. And then you're gonna see that it's exactly the same. At the moment, can you see that query return no result? Which means that because it only tracks after, and then because after that, I haven't done any changes, therefore there will be nothing in there. But let's make it breaks. If I put here version one, the first one is gonna break because it's gonna say error. And then it's getting from a range that there was no record or versions there for change data fit. So that's why I have to put uh, uh, a number that's two or greater. Okay, now I'm just gonna send, do a small change. So for the record ID number one, I'm just gonna change the uh, ID to a spider last name so you can see the last name was for id1 uh, is santiago that's going to be sarah spider so let's see the changes uh, i need to put a new timestamp because this is from the previous um, example Yeah, you can see that there is uh, what they say, a change type, uh, update pre-image and update post image. And then there are three columns, like the change data fits pretty much the table and with three added columns, the change type, the version that, that those changes were committed, in this case, version three, and then the commit timestamp. So every time that I, you wanted to do like a change data feeds to propagate. One best practices is always to get the latest version of this table. For example, the latest version for like a ID or a unique record would be if you rank by descending commit timestamp. And in, in this case, I'm just gonna, because I'm not going to have deletes on this um, stream, I'm just gonna exclude deletes and update per image. I'm, I'm not just interested in the update post image. So if I run that, so it's just like a, a um, Python function that takes this data frame. In this case, I'm just getting the CDF stamp data frame. And then I'm just gonna show in the, uh, I think I need to import, I made a mistake here. I think I need to have this and then that should work. Let's try again, which creates the latest version and then that should work now. Voila, so that's the latest version of the records. So the silver, um, 
step transformation i'm just gonna take this same data frame and just like create a new column called full name with first name and last name so that's it done and then i'm just gonna create like uh, this schema of the super table and that's it if i go here to uh, my queries now i have an empty super table so with zero records uh what's happening it should be there i think it the code hasn't finished yet yeah now we should have one hopefully let's try again yeah we just have an empty table with no records now so what that's the most complicated part of the code that i'm just gonna walk you through so i'm creating this new function here that we are gonna pass as an argument of the for each batch when you read the stream from the CDF. So it's a little bit like esoteric here because we create a function where it automatically takes two arguments, which is the data frame coming on the stream batch and batch ID. That's gonna be clear when I show you the logs, but basically what I'm doing is as long as the data frame is not empty or there is something to process i'm gonna do like a merge statement so i'm gonna have this sync table which is a delta table which in this case is this silver table and i'm just gonna first transform this into a data frame just to count how many records are there and then I'm just going to get the latest version of my records coming from this feed, which is the data frame coming here from the feed. And I'm just going to apply this function here that I just demonstrate to you here, which is going to see. I wanted to know what are the latest version of a unique records. And then using this as source, I'm going, which is the source, and then I'm just going to apply the transformations, which in this case is just like creating that full name column. And then using that as a source, I'm just going to merge into the silver table. And then, which, which is very simple, I'm just interested in updates and certs. So when there is not a match, well, sorry, when there is a match, update all columns. When there's not a match insert all and then i need to execute because everything in spark is lazily evaluated so once the merge is finished i just wanted to log how many records are there in this destination table after the merge was done and then i also wanted to log if there was no records to load just say in this batch there was no records to load all right, so last step here is finally to read the stream. So you know that uh, as I demonstrated above, you can read the stream defining from what version or from what date time, or you have the option just omit that option here. I'm just gonna show you. So, you don't need that option start from just say read feed from this table and then what's gonna happen then it's gonna look into the checkpoint and know exactly where it stopped and what was the last batch and then from this batch i'm gonna read it so and then i'm just gonna use here the same trigger type and i'm gonna save that into the CDF. So what this function I'm going to do is going to read. So I forgot to run that one. Uh, Silver TL. I think I didn't run that one. Yeah. Now it should work. So what's going to happen? It creates the stream. It's going to read that stream. And then can you see the for each batch? I'm just passing that function as an argument. 
yeah and then all those code here was executed if i go now to silver table it should have those 20 records yeah and then if i do a uh, full create ally if i do a select um out from uh because now oh, this table here which is customers uh silver should have those 20 records with that additional column uh full name which concatenates that and that all right and then that's always going to be the latest version like cyrus spider and then if i make some change that's going to merge into a different one so that's basically it uh let's now um yeah i've done that already so which is just query that table the silver table uh let's look at the logs now so i have uh the logs here saved in this same data breaks folder if i go here and then i go to logs um, so that's the one and then if i see those logs so what's happened so there was no records and then on batch zero there was um 20 records to merge and after the merge we have now 20 records now let's create lots of records and then run everything again but i'm just gonna run the auto loader and then cdf and see what happens what i'm gonna do like i'm just gonna do 10 times 20 it'll be like another 200 records total records will be 220 so and then uh just to i'm just giving like a 15 minutes time here or 15 seconds time just in between every batch that i'm loading just to allow me some time to just run my code in data bricks and i'm just gonna run that twice to demonstrate you the logs and how the thing works just to help you to get your head around of the auto loader and the cdf and how everything works so let's run this code here again bang so that's oh, i need to save that so there will be like a 20 record extra that's gonna be like 240 but anyway that's no problem i need just to save that and then to run again you see that if i go back to the um to the customer folder now there will be like two files you see that but now i'm just gonna run 10 an extra 10 but that's gonna run one and another one so it should have now three so let's uh customers gonna have three but while that's doing let's run the auto loader the first one which is that one let's read that stream so that's gonna look in this folder and say are there any csv files now to read so let's do it so let's see how many are there um customers yeah now there is one two three four so there'll be like about 80 records plus 20 will be like 100 yeah probably so probably there'll be enough well, let's see how many records on the bronze after that so there'll be like yeah 80 probably there was not enough time to read the last one so there was uh, four that were loaded so and the rest will be loaded on the last one so this thing's still going so let's do this silver layer now so that one is finished because the way this because i put light available now true it first runs see if there are new files there it loads all the files that hasn't been loaded but once that's loaded it stopped and then because the uh, stream stopped it doesn't look at the folder again until i run that stream again so i don't need to run this code again because i've already done that so let's run this one to see what happened with the history um 
yeah now can you see that there was the update and then there is also those that new stream update red those like extra 60 records that was added into the bronze table so if you see now the bronze table there is 80 records but the silver table are still like 20 records which will be added new records now so if i go here and let's run those one as well and then you can see how the chain data fit works so these are all the inserts so these are the original update that i've done and then everything else was just inserts on version four so let's keep this one uh, because this is a update that i've done on id one this one i've oh let's see the latest version so that's gonna be the latest version um no, not this one. The latest version is this one. Yeah, so there is only one record per ID. So the latest version of this uh, record is this one. And that one, I don't need to run again. I don't need to run again. This one as well. Now I just need to run that stream again. And then that's going to just get the, not the next batch and then merge into silver again so if i go to here so now we should have 80 records and that's it so i've got the silver table latest version so just to finalize the demo this, this video is already too long i'm gonna finally run the reminder of the files which are going to be like from my maths here 240 records to be loaded in bronze now it's all done and then i'll oh, just a final stream on this one no not this one this one and then finally we will have the total records for bronze is 240 and for silver should if it's finished it should be 240 yeah there we go so um, i'll do one more thing here for example if i run this stream again so that's gonna immediately stop because it can you see that it's immediately stopped because it sees on the checkpoint and there is nothing there you see start and then immediately stop yeah i can run that as many times as i want it's not going to be um have to run but if i go here and delete my checkpoints for that table it's gonna start from the beginning but uh, but because i'm using a merge it's still going to be 240 records there let's run that so it's going to run the whole stream since the beginning now it's going to take a little bit while it's not going to stop now can you see that started the job it didn't stop because the, the checkpoint there is no there i'm just going to go it's kind of it's kind of like resetting the checkpoint now it's all loaded but if i go here it's still 240 because that's a merge and insert and update yeah i have all the same records here just in case you feel not to reset your silver table and reload everything from the beginning that's the way you do just delete the checkpoint and then just gonna start all over again all right so last 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 thing i'm gonna just inspect the logs to show everything that happened so i'm just gonna load that into the azure storage and then i'll finish the video yeah you can see that i reload those 20 records and then on the second time um the source table had like an extra 60 record which was the changes that happened after the first load and then can you see that it's it started to read just the change from the last load and that's perfect and very scalable for incremental loads so and then after loading those six red 
records, the sync table had 80 records. And then the final one, so I started with 80 records and then on the batch ID number two, there were only 180 records to load. And after that, I have a final sync table with 200 records. And then finally, because I deleted the checkpoint, and then you have to start from batch ID zero and then read the whole 240 records as an input on the source table and then sunk. Uh, and then at the end, because all those IDs was already there and then there was a match and then Databricks is clever enough to know that there is no change there and then did nothing and just left the tables, uh, the rows of that table unchanged. All right, guys, this is everything that you need to know, at least the basics to do more complicated scenarios of auto loader and propagating the changes of a, ta a Delta table using change.feed in Databricks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe, click the bell and like the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.